Good morning and welcome to Techstars Founder Catalyst Japan Pitch Day event. This program was organized by Japan's external trade organization, the Cabinet's Office, and the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industries. My name is Oko and I'm a director at Ecosystem Development Team at Techstars. And I'm extremely happy to present you the 24 companies we got to work with for the last two months. I want to take this opportunity to thank over 250 individuals from all over the world who ran master classes, mentored these founders, and also opened their personal and professional connections so that these companies can really advance in their journey of going global. Enjoy. When I meet with people, they often ask me, what is it that makes Techstars so special? Is it our founders, our mentors? our corporate partners, our community leaders, all of the above. It's about the power of networks, but not just any network. Techstars is the worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. Demo Day is special because it's a milestone, a symbolic step in the entrepreneur's journey, a time to reflect on growth, to share visions for the road ahead. We're here because we believe helping entrepreneurs leads to a better future. So for every step of the journey, the Techstars Network is here to support you. Whether attending a Techstars community event, joining a Techstars mentorship-driven accelerator, or becoming a Techstars corporate innovation partner, or raising capital from the Techstars Network, we help entrepreneurs make connections and access resources. From idea, to IPO. Who's next? Hello, everyone. This is Yoshi Shi, director of of innovation at the Cabinet Office, Japan. As you know, innovation is important driving force for the brighter future. And startups are the key player for the innovation. So the government is promoting startups with various programs. Especially, we are focusing on ecosystem in the city environment and connection to the global player. It is a reason that we started this acceleration program. We believe with the great effort of Techstars and JETRO, the participants cutting edge startups in Japan can get a lot of insights and method, also connection to the global key player with this program. We are looking forward to hear the achievement of the uh, participant startup today. I heard a lot of foreign investors and key players are joining today's session. Mr. and Mrs. Investors and key players, please look at the possibility of Japan startup and invest or collaborate with Japan startup to create brighter future. Japanese government is supporting Japan startups globalization. Also welcome following key players collaboration. Let's create brighter future together. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm Hideki Shimada. I'm director of Startup Support Division in Jetro. 
Thank you very much for joining the demo day for Japan Startup Ecosystem Acceleration Program, which is operated by Techstars. JETRO is a government-related organization that works to promote overseas expansion of Japanese startups. For the first time, JETRO has implemented an acceleration program in collaboration with Techstars so that Japanese startups can expand their business overseas. In Japan, there are many startups with excellent technology, not only in Tokyo, but also in local cities such as Nagoya, Osaka, and Fukuoka. Today, I'm very excited to deliver to you the results of the mentoring of the world's top accelerator, Techstars, to 24 attractive startups from such local cities. We will have a live networking session in later half of the demo day. So please talk with the startups too. At last, I'd like to appreciate the Techstars team for doing this program with a great management team and mentors. Please continue to support Japanese startups. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm David, and I'm the program manager of Techstars Founder Catalyst Japan program. Hello to you all. Thank you for joining this first pitch day event here in Japan. The companies are amazing, they're passionate, and they intend to change the world in various different ways. Their drive and enthusiasm are energizing. I love you all. So, we have 24 companies from four regions in Japan working in healthcare, IoT, medical, IT services, blockchain, AI, agriculture, and robotics. Working on incredible products from investing in antibodies to helping farmers in India. I could go on, but let's hear from them. Hi, I'm Misa Katana, CEO of the Vision and also Modis. Today, I'm here to talk to you about our latest technology about gene therapy, which makes prime patients to be able to see the world again. Please close your eyes. Can you imagine what a patient feels like losing their sight? It is said that vision occupies 80% of the information that people obtain from the outside. The quality of life suffers considerably with blindness. As an ophthalmologist, I'm struggling with this current intractable eye disease and trying to overcome this problem. In Japan, there are 300,000 visual impairment patients and their social cost is over $80 billion per year. And the second cause of this problem is a disease, namely retinitis pigmentosa. cell. What is worse, it is intractable right now. Please let me introduce about our approach to visual restoration. The key word is chimeric lapsin. The lapsin is a photosensor protein, so you can see this slide because your lapsin is sensing this slide. Please look at this table. Here are two types of lopsin, animal lopsin and microbial lopsin. We hybridize these two, type of, two types of lopsin to create chimeric lopsin that is optimized for visual restoration. This chimeric lopsin has higher sensitivity so, and can work independently, so it overcame the weaknesses of the conventional lopsin. Please let me introduce how we can restore vision with this chimeric lopsin. It is a simple injection into the eyeball, then the AB vector delivers this chimeric lopsin gene into the target cells. And then the treated cells become photoreceptive. And then the, then the patient can to be able to sense the light again. The feature of this product is high sensitivity that you can see things even at this evening. This innovative method has a strong market value because it is less invasive treatment. The patient needs only one shot simple injection and it takes only one month to recover vision and the effects last permanently. Let me introduce one experimental data with mice. In the behavioral test, 
When the mice sensor light, the healthy mice hide quickly into the dark place. On the other hand, the blind mice only one don't do such behavior. And then the treated mice, as a result of visual restoration, they significantly hide into the dark place, sensing even a dim light. Please let me introduce, uh, here is a competitor analysis map. There are four major competitors in the blue rectangle. They are all using microbial lapsing I mentioned earlier, so compared to them, our treatment is higher sensitivity, so functionally superior. And in addition, the artificial retina and the IPS require big invasive surgery and expensive. So compared to them, our treatment is much simpler than these. Here is a develop development plan. We are planning to develop in six years of time and 15 million dollars totally, using a full strength as a no contract. We have confirmed technical POC and in the next step to confirm clinical POC, we need $5 million. As a reference of the exit, the uh, competitor I mentioned earlier was acquired for over $500 million. This is a business model. We aim for out license after obtaining clinical POC, and the target market is their end stage patient, statistically shown here. From the launch in 2026, we assume a profit of $2 billion at the peak and continue to grow with its overseas income. To realize this project, we have created optimized by the team using a full strength of our investing network. Finally, we have a great place in our technology and it will meet the needs of the blind patient who want to see the world again. We are now looking for a clinical web development expert who joined us. Thank you for attention today and thank you very much for your time. Hello everyone, I'm Mariko, CEO of SAC. Please let me introduce this 5mm square chip called SAC device. We are a startup company from Osaka City University established in 2015. Our technology is based on more than 40 years of research done by Professor Tsujimoto, who is a founder of SAC. As shown in this slide, our patented technology is power sensor, which means that SAC device can do the same as conventional power meter. Key points of innovation are following. Revolutionary compact, low energy consumption, accurately measuring AC, DC, real and apparent power, more than 50 patents in Japan, US, China, Europe, and so on. In past six years, we have raised about 0.5 billion yen from venture capital and business companies. Our plan is to be publicly listed with the market of Tokyo Stock Exchange in 2023 to 24. We are going to raise additional 10 million US dollars by the end of this year. SAC device has four key functions, current, power, angle measurement, and frequency extraction. We use the same device and design peripheral circuits for each application. In near future, we will be like Intel. SAC device has a wide range of application in energy fields, can be incorporated into various equipment, devices and terminals. You will see SAC inside in your everyday life. Here's our product lineup. Let me give you a brief introduction from next slide. This is the first product launch at the market in October 2019. We put the sensor chip on top of the cover of pressure gauge and read the angle of the pointer remotely. Our technology has been used by many factories and power plants in Japan. This picture is where we installed our sensors on pressure gauge and thermometer. You can check the data remotely. Our sensor can also monitor water consumption, as shown in this slide. Our IoT solution has been used in one of African countries, Rwanda. We installed our sensor to remotely monitor where leakage or stealings are happening in order to solve non-revenue water issue. IoT current sensor will be released in this summer. You can just add on to the existing current line and monitor the data remotely. The data can be used for saving energy consumption or predicting failure or trouble of machines. We also have IoT power sensor. This is also add-on type. No construction is needed. We are now trying to reach the same level as power meter. We have smart power plug, which SAC devices installed to monitor power consumption in plug. 
one of the strong points of such device is to measure high current within this tip. Market needs in the EV industry is to improve battery efficiency. Volume and space of EV is more and more severe, but existing sensor is large and heavy. Our sensor attracts a lot of attention in the EV industry. Several components companies are now trying to test our device. We are now under development in IoT battery tank, IoT R3 sensor now. We are going to release this product in the next two to three years. Our future application is to use a chip as edge computing device, which can filter specific frequency wave to be applied in ultrasonic testing tunnels, distance measurement, or ultrasonic diagnosis in future. Thank you very much for your attention. We are AirAmp. AirAmp is a streaming service that allows artists and creators to live in share and jointly publish their collaboration work. My name is Kazuo Saito. I'm a CEO of AirAmp and I'm a <laughs> B-box artist from Sac du Soleil. Three years and two months. This is how much I searched to become a Sac du Soleil. There's no beatboxer wanted, no audition, so I search which director charging what show and where the possibility I can take the place. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, I search any connection, and one of my friends kindly connected to the director. Ta-da, that's me. After my first show, I was so excited to tweet. Finally, I get the stage, hashtag suck to slay as a hashtag beatboxer. Just in two hours from the tweet, one of our Italian kids beatboxer contacted me. Are you beatboxer? How did you join the Cirque du Soleil? If I didn't tweet, if I used the Japanese, if I didn't tag it, I think he's still searching like my three years. This is the moment I decided to start up my air amp. Think back my 20 years of artist career. I used to handle 11 bands in the same time. I was happy when they pay me end of the show. But how about the streaming error? Video plays over and over again. And my channel doesn't have much videos because I'm just a support beatbox guy. Next big sound comment says more than 93% of artists and creators are undiscovered. Entertainment industry is still invisible. Aramp, this is the answer. If you and your friends doing a band, create a video. When you post the video on AirAmp, you need to tag in all of the members and set up what they do at Lebanese percent. So if you support as a video editor, how about 10%? Now I send you offer. Just like this, because of the Lebanese, now you can jump in around any project, I mean channel. It's display like IMDB, I'm a beatboxer. I'm also stage director. On this event, I'm a graphic designer. Life is multi-dimension, so why not the system like that? Oh, you deal. Nice. AMP, you can monetize all of your related work, and it's automatically update their profile. It's searchable and comparable. We create provable portfolio just like GitHub. Why I say GitHub of entertainment? Because GitHub can efficiently search success stories in coding. So how about entertainment? AMP, we crediting your collaboration. Okay, what I've done is I have a patent in Japan. I've got the police sign up 55 artists and I'm only one board member. I have two engineers, I have Japanese investor, but I still bootstrapping because I will go United States, set up the company in this summer. So let's drop this bigger, try this bigger. So help me. What I'm asking is fundraising, looking for partner people who have the strong origin in entertainment industry. And of course, I need a tech engineer. I know I have to talk monetize and growth plan phase one, phase two. So please ask me later. Thank you. This is AMP. Be collaborative. Hello, everyone. I'm Hitoshi, CSO of Kaiko. Today, I'm happy to introduce our company to all of you. 
Our company's mission is to create more sustainable bodies for the planet. Our goal is to become the leading platform of protein production for innovative human, animal oil vaccines, and animal feed additives. With our eco-friendly mulberry eating silkworm platform, we are contributing to the global environment. We are the startup originated from Kyushu University. Our business is closely supported by the academia of the university, especially from insect molecular genetics and the other one from enzyme engineering. As a world leader of silkworm study, Kyushu University has the original inbred strains of silkworm more than 450, with the best mix resource allocation of our inbred strains we are capable of producing any kinds of specific interest of proteins on customer's demand. We do have a very special, unique technology of producing proteins using Kaiko as bioreactor. Compared to the existing solution in the market, we do have more valuable platform cost experience propositions. This is part of our traction and accomplishments. Some vaccines for animals are under development with some Japanese animal pharmaceutical companies. We have already validated the highly efficient productivity of our product. For example, one silkworm is equal to 500 shots of productivity when it comes to the a vaccine for cosin. We do have a GMP production facility and the construction, which we are ready to be used in 2020. This is to show how we are capable of producing proteins at the quickest level on demand of our customer needs. For example, COVID-19 spike protein was produced in less than three months. Based on this successful result, we already commercialized our antibody detection kit last year. This is to show our strategic horizons. We are aiming at Horizon 3 in five years to produce all our vaccines for human. Now we are at the Horizon 1, focused on animal feed and meat production. We are now looking for our potential partners to make this possible to jointly produce the edible vaccines and feed additives with prevention disease function like a vaccine like effect. Our business is very sustainable. We are contributing to the carbon negative by producing our protein platform. Silkworms eat only mulberry leaves. The more production means the more leaves are needed. That means that more trees are planted. Thank you for listening. We look forward to having further discussion with our potential partners. Hello, my name is James Cannon and I'm co-founder at Challenge Hub, the crowdsourcing platform for teaching preparation. As a university professor and an invited speaker at international conferences on education, I've seen firsthand the duplication of effort in teaching and the impact that this is having on teachers. My co-founder Tim has supported open source software projects throughout his career, including open sourcing core parts of Google's infrastructure, and he co-founded Challenge Hub with me because he saw an opportunity to bring the advantages of open source to the world of education. Let me introduce you to my colleague Andrew, a professor in physics. He's been assigned to teach a new course, but for every hour of teaching, it takes him eight hours to prepare. He still needs to conduct research and mentor students, so this means he's always short of time. He is aware of better ways to teach, but never has enough time to change what he's doing. At best, Andrew will have one or two other teachers' works to reference. But the fact is that there are thousands of teachers around the world who teach the same subject. Until now, though, there's been no easy way for them to share anything. Challenge Hub enables Andrew to easily use practice problems and courses created by other teachers. In this case, Andrew finds another teacher's problems on mechanics and realizes that she's structured her problems in the same style that he likes to. He quickly imports her course, saving him 50 hours of work. Teachers like Andrew like an interface that's easy to understand. 
We developed a prototype, ran a trial with several teachers, and then used the feedback to simplify the interface and improve how sharing worked. Sharing through crowdsourcing platforms is experiencing a boom, with investment in crowdsourcing doubling since 2018. With teaching loads higher than ever, we see an opportunity to leverage crowdsourcing in education. We're engaged in an email outreach campaign as we found teachers to be responsive to our mission over email. We are also meeting key stakeholders through webinars where we are able to demonstrate the product to large audiences. Furthermore, we plan to seed the platform with a range of practice problems and courses to make it more attractive to new users. Our initial objective is to sign up 10,000 teachers, although our main goal is ultimately to sign enterprise deals. They have a long lead time, but we expect that the connections with our teachers will expedite these. In the meantime, we will also pursue individual subscriptions with the 95% of teachers who have a personal or department level budget to pay for teaching support tools. Challenge Hub uniquely recognizes that sharing is the missing ingredient in tackling the problem with teaching preparation, and that to have maximum impact, the shared work needs to be organized into courses. Another unique feature of Challenge Hub is its support for curation. We saw with Andrew how he was able to take an entire course on a specialist branch of mechanics. Other teachers are in turn able to use the improvements that Andrew makes so that the quality of the course increases over time. For several years, the growth of education demands has outstripped the growth in the capacity of its teachers, and the pandemic has made this even more stark. If trends continue, education systems will reach a breaking point because their teachers will not be able to cope. We built Challenge Hub because we believe that crowdsourcing is the essential missing element to match teaching capacity with demand. We're looking for partners who share our vision and can help us as we proceed to the next stage of growing content. Thank you for your attention. We all research online before we buy anything. And the way to win business online is to inspire customers with relevant content. Content is now the product people buy. And the value of your product is in the content. So every company must now master the art of storytelling as a matter of survival. And that's why 93% of businesses view content as a business asset rather than a marketing asset. And 97% of businesses publish content on multiple channels. And businesses now spend more on marketing technology than they do on ads, agencies, and people. But the content you see is just the tip of the iceberg. And beneath the surface, MarTech is still extremely analog, disconnected, and cumbersome. You'll be astonished to learn that the average marketer uses 91 different platforms in their day-to-day -day job. There's still a huge opportunity to claim some of the $80 billion spent on content software as a service each year. 72% of content professionals say they're challenged strategically. 74% say they're not very successful at content marketing. And despite spending a lot of budget on technology, an astonishing 78% of marketers say they still lack efficient work management tools. I'm Tom Brook, founder and CEO of Curate, the strategy platform to ideate, plan, manage, create, review, and approve all your content across all your channels and all your teams, internal and external. You can build your strategy with our persona builder and associate your personas with your channels, themes, topics, and campaigns. Then you can map out your plan and literally get all of your teams on the same page. Create, review, approve content on all your channels with pixel-perfect previews. Curate only replaces the part of your workflow which isn't working well, and that's the content operations. It integrates seamlessly with the platforms you already use for publishing your content. Our customers love Curate even more than we th thought they would. 
Here's a quote from one of our customers. She says, It's such a relief to find a platform that ties everything together seamlessly. This tool is massively simplifying my workflow and project management. We're targeting marketing teams in medium to large companies. And we're on track for closing 200 paid customers giving us $56,000 of monthly recurring revenue by July this year. The average customer will have a lifetime value of $1.8,000 and cost us $170 to acquire, giving us a return of 11x on our CPA. We're aiming to scale our business and reach $3 million of annual recurring revenue by the end of this year. We have an international team with over 100 years of combined experience working in both corporate and agency marketing teams. This is the third platform that the same team has developed and brought to the market. Our DXP, shown here, is being used in Japan by banks and the government. We're interested in meeting potential investors for our bridge round and the Series A which we're planning for next spring. Investors and customers can contact me at tom at curate.com or book a meeting with me and my team at curate.co slash book a meeting. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jun from Chainto. Today, I would like to introduce you all about our one-stop blockchain app development platform called Papyrus. According to PwC's Time for Trust report, blockchain technologies have the potential to add 1.76 trillion to the global GDP by 2030. And 84% of the executives say that their organizations have at least some involvements with blockchain technologies. But I would like to ask this question to you all. Has blockchain actually changed your life? Probably not. Not yet. But then, why blockchain adoption is slow? Here are the three major issues. Need a right team specialist to build applications, which takes time and cost. Need a scalable blockchain. And need to maintain open network when it requires accountability. Here's our team, and let me explain a little bit about our story. We have been working with government sector and many big corporates more than five years. And we realized that similar implementation was required in many cases. So we developed a hybrid blockchain for business use, which is scalable and accountable. And we developed APIs. No need for specialists anymore. And now we are able to accelerate the blockchain adoption. Bitcoin is the most powerful and secure blockchain in the world. And we created a forked version of Bitcoin Core and named it Papyrus. We changed the consensus algorithm from proof of work to proof of authority. Now it has high security, business use, scalable and accountable, and easy to use. Throughout our journey, we have realized that actually blockchain is very complicated for many companies. So we developed a Tapiris platform, which comes with Tapiris API, which is customized for many use cases, such as traceability, government DX, energy sector. Now, blockchain app development is easy and fast, and we have a proprietary technology solving the problem of scalability and accountability and these are already included in the Tapiris platform. So developers do not have to care about these issues anymore and they could focus on the application development. In a typical blockchain implementation, the more transaction increases, the more data will be recorded on blockchain, which brings a huge scalability issue. However, Tapiris proprietary technology will compress the size of the data, which enables to handle large transaction volume. We have worked with many organizations in the past few years and let me introduce you one of the project. We are working with Fisheries Agency under MAF, one of the ministry in Japan. Fisheries Agency has established a new law which requires sea cucumber abalones to have a proper traceability. For them to create applications, our traceability API was adopted. And what our clients say, we were able to implement traceability function without having a deep knowledge of blockchain. So it explains how easy it was to use our APIs. Here is our business model. Between Chaintop and end users, we always work with partner companies and through our Tapiris platform, we provide APIs and we get an API usage fee. And depending on projects, we charge starting from 1000 USD per month, which is very reasonable compared to our competitors. Chaintop's Tapiris is the only blockchain which could start from low cost, developer friendly and suitable for the business use cases. Here is the traction and milestones. 
Currently, our main revenue comes from the software development services, but we are changing the business model from software development to a subscription model from the API usage. Current sales is around 1.6 million USD and 0.4 million is the revenue from the APIs. And we are targeting 30 million in 2025. We have raised more than 2 million USD in Japan. And now we are looking for USD 5 million Series A fundraising. Funds will be used to expanding to global markets and marketing expenses to attract more partner companies. Tapirus is always your best partner to support your blockchain app development. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Yuma, CSO at Plosync. We are creating an ICU patient management platform. Why do this? Because of this thing. This is an instruction note for a patient. This is as well. This is a management board for ICU beds. What did you feel? You may feel it's not organized enough for life-saving information and not easily shareable records. Exactly. Those ugly stuff actually kills people. In fact, there are many incidents like overlooking instructions, erroneous medications due to inefficient management. COVID-19 makes it worse because patient contact is limited. Each year in the US alone, many patients die and about 4,000 days are lost for reasons that could be prevented if managing properly and timely. As a result, hospitals suffer huge losses every year. We are reinventing the way patients are managed by automating records and sharing with accurate, real-time information on multiple patients through our product, Ipsen. When logging into our platform, Ipsen automatically obtains data from physiological monitor and lists patient information in real-time, including civility identified by color. Ipsen can assess multiple patient civility simultaneously from Bali's perspectives and predict how it will change next few hours, enabling more rapid response. Also, by automatically capturing vitals, doctors can monitor patient conditions from anywhere. Our key differentiator is unlike other companies, we can predict patient civility by combining vital analytics with patient image recognition from a live video feed. This allows to provide additional important insight like consciousness level, sedation score, and delirious conditions in patients. Next five years, we'll incorporate various information, including EMR, into the platform to achieve consistent patient management throughout hospital, where we call the world ICU anywhere. Our target market is where ICU resources like specialist doctors are limited. When approaching to ICU anywhere, we can also expand our market into the outermost market. We make profits from hospitals by selling recursive software licenses, so managing 10 beds need 10 licenses annually. We aim to install our product in 200 hospitals and 2,000 beds by FY25. So far, one user is evaluating Ipsen and we've interviewed nine hospitals in Japan and two in India and Taiwan in these two months and received positive feedback. So they'll be highly likely obtainable next two years. Our founding team is consisted of an ICU specialist doctor with 20 year experience, AI and healthcare business expert, and a leading AI engineer who all have had strong experiences. Also, we have strong partners with domestic and global networks to support us. Lastly, to achieve our vision, we need more research opportunities and funding. If you're a company or you know someone who is interested in closing, please contact me. We will be inventing the way patients are managed and let's make together the world where we can save more patient lives. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Sun Xiaojun, the founder and CEO of Bandicam, a startup spin-off from Tokyo University. We are building powered processes 
for the handicapped people. First, I'd like to introduce why we are doing this. In fact, I'm a prosthesis user. I got my right leg amputated when I was nine years old. It was difficult for me to afford a prosthesis, so I worked with a crutch for 15 years. Ten years ago, I got my first prosthesis. It changed my life. However, I use a prosthesis a lot. I found there are many issues. I was wondering, I could design better prosthesis for myself and other people. So I quit my job from Sony and then came back to Tokyo University as a PhD student. I have researched in prosthesis for several years. I got my PhD degree, so I built this company. In current market, most of the prosthesis is passive, which means there's low any power. It's like human's knee joints without muscle. There is only a bone and the joint. So the user faces several challenges in their daily life. For example, they cannot go up or down stairs like everyone in left videos. It's very easy to fall down because of the lead backing. Besides, it's a big burden on the sand leg and body because they have to drive the processes by their own power. We are building a new power processes by fusing robotic te technology and the human body. When the user use our processes, they can, go, they can stand up much more easily and largely in left videos. In right video, the knee backing can be prevented by motor assist so the user can walk much more safely. In left video, the user have to go upstairs by step, step by step. In left video, the user can go upstairs like everyone. There are several competitive advantages in weight, press, and technology. We start this research from 2015. We have involved several generations. Finally, we are going to market this year. We will sell our product in Japan and China because it's a non vertical device. In the future, we want to go to US and Europe market. We have a strong international team in Japan and China. This is our funding. We uh, have raised Series A in last year. We raised uh, 5 million US dollars. This is some awards we got in past. We got the Red Dot Luminal Award in 2020. Finally, I'd like to introduce our mission. We want to power mobility for all the people by fusing robotic technology and the human body. International provide robotics navigation solution are suitable even for unstructured and dynamics environment, and at the same time it is easy to handle even for non-technical operator. So why did still many companies that end up choosing Doom's robotic solution? Implementation difficulty using common SLAM navigation often leads to increasing project cost, and the user often has to deal with a complicated operating system that's difficult to set up and troubleshoot. Question the current common solution and determine to come up with a more simple and practical robotic navigation solution, and at the same time operating can be easily done without any software. Duke in-house developed robotic navigation solution is simple to implement and troubleshoot even for non-tech savvy user, and it does not require Wi-Fi or Bluetooth device to operate and no software to set up, saving time and cost. Please enable Duke's mobile robot to have both autonomous navigation function using memory trace mode and collaborative function using follow me mode, giving users the flexibility for safe interlogistics operation. Follow me navigation allows robot to follow target with just a press of a button. 
robot can continuously follow the target and avoiding obstacles even in an unstructured and dynamics environment. Memory trace navigation allows the robot to run autonomously in a predetermined route. Users can easily set up multiple routes without any laptop, tablet, and complicated software. Many functions like reverse playback, looping, timed pause at multiple stops in one route, and signal triggering for peripheral device are all included in memory trace mode. Loop's product line includes Bowser, the robotic cart, designed for intralogistics operation, and Guru, the robotic wheelchair, designed for healthcare and hospitality industries. Hi, this is Yuki, CEO of Ognize. We are providing the IoT development tool for software engineers. When you start the IoT development, you have to choose the edge computer. You have two choices. One is a microprocessor. It is a very tiny and low price and low power consumption, but it's hard to program it because you need to write a C or C++ codes. In the other hand, you can choose the Raspberry Pi or other kind of things. It's very easy to program, but it's high price and high power consumption, or it's a little bit big. In the IoT development region, the, we have the idea to solve it. So if the hardware can be controlled from the internet through the APIs, so you don't need, then you don't need to write the firmware to control the hardware. So this is the basic idea of the organize. So with the organize, only you need to write the cloud-side softwares. And so this technology, we call it the uh, formulaist technology. Uh, this is a, this, uh, we picked the good point of both. So it is easy to programming and it, it is technology can be run with the microprocessors. So we, the, our business is we sell the hardware, uh, including our cloud license, to the software developers. And not only the hardware, but also we sell the cloud license as a subscription model. Uh, for the hardware companies, so we sell the, uh, we, we will build the entire IoT system which used our technologies. Uh, our traction is that we have been sold over 10,000 units uh, almost in Japan. And the one uh, major use case is the uh, indoor location system. Uh, in the indoor location systems, um, the, the customers use the gateways to collect the beacon data, um, then the, uh, send it to the cloud systems. So this market is already exist and the customers is already using the uh, competitors' gateways. But with the, our technologies, the customer can choose the more low-cost gateways like 30% or more or less hardware as uh, compared from others. And our firmware less technology let developers to do more after deployment because the software can run on the cloud system. So easy to update. And we have the competitors in the cloud region and hardware region. But the significant, significant difference is that only we provide the firmware technologies. 
And now we have the 25 members in this company and our stage is a series A round. And our challenge is that we'd like to become the uh, standard OS and cloud for the IoT development. And now we have, we only, we have the uh, customers in almost in Japan, but we'd like to expand in other countries. So we are now seeking for the uh, partners in other countries. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Hiroshi Nishi. I'm Chief Business Officer at Knights. I wanted to show you this image. This is a surface of plastic. By the way, this is not a product. Anyway, very beautiful structure and precise work on the surface. Beautiful product need beautiful mold. Look at very precise structure on the metal and even on the curved surface. By the way, he's our client. He's an expert of mold making. He used tiny tool, 0.1 millimeter, it's about the size of our hair. And he used all his experience to make such. As you can see, he is not young anymore. Aging population is the serious social issue in Japan. Right now, over 65 years old are 28% of population, and it will reach to 38% by 2050. What we are going to do? We transfer knowledge or wisdom of specialist or expert to the future generation by using our AI, which is built by expert thought and knowledge. We focus our activities in four major fields, manufacturing, sports, agriculture, and education. We barbarize expert thought and knowledge and put into our AI to create so-called brain model. Using this brain model, the AI seek other information in database with expert point of view. Simply, we copy specialists using AI. How we use? AI can share the knowledge as search engine. AI can produce indication like recommender. AI can answer the question like chatbot. We have over 100 clients in across industries. Unfortunately, Due to the public nature of this event, we can't disclose our customer name, but they are some of the largest automobile companies in Japan and globally, consumer electronics, FMCGs, and detail, OEM, construction, machinery, chemicals, heavy industry, and aerospace. We are making strategic alliance with partners for complementing each other like a Siemens. We became first gold partner in Japan their industry IoT platform called MindSphere. We also work with artisan who has mastered specific skill set to produce Japanese traditional craft. At the same time, we also collaborate with academic expert who has knowledge in the engineering approach. We create artisan brain model and we merge with engineering database so that artisan decision can be explaining with mechanism. We have done this project in different artisans across Japan. Our business today, our revenue is 7.5 million US dollars. And we have about 100 people in our team. We have seven offices across Japan. For our next step, we are raising funds for these two actions. First, we are developing new service knowledge share and communication AI platform for targeting SMEs. Second, we are expanding our business outside of Japan. We are focusing in Asia. In this year, 2021, we are planning to open Taiwanese operation. Our founder and CEO is Shingo Tobe. His career started as manufacturing technology engineer at Canon. Most of us are from manufacturing industry, including myself. I have experience in the semiconductor industry, particularly in the venture company in the semiconductor manufacturing equipment. And our CFO is professional financial background from Mizuho Bank. For further growth, we are looking for strategic partner who can help us with our global expansion. 
particularly deep connection in the manufacturing industry. Thank you very much. Did you know that what we have eaten or drunk is affecting to us differently in each person because of our gut environment? Hi everyone, we are Metabolo Genomics, the biotech startup based in Japan. We are the group of researchers studying the gut microbes, our closest neighbor inside our body, who is significantly affecting to our health. Inside our large intestine, there are over trillions of microbes are living. These microbes are not only existing but also producing varieties of substances called metabolites by degrading materials in the gut, such as undigested food. These metabolites are absorbed into our body and transported to various parts of the body via blood circulation and causing various health effects. This includes some kind of disease like intestinal disease, organ disease, mental disorder, allergy, or even the resistance against the virus infection and the drug effectiveness. But each person has their own unique environment, which makes the story a little bit complex. What kind and how much each type of microbes living in their gut is totally different in individuals. And this results that even people take same food, drink, supplement or drug, different metabolite production occurs in each person end up with different health effects. This causes the difficulty for consumers to find out their best ingester, as well as difficulty for manufacturer to develop the product effective for wide range of people. But the great point of envi gut environment is it is modifiable, unlike genomic information. So the solution of this is, if people have the inappropriate gut environment, just modify it to more suitable condition by adding components to regulate the gut environment to receive the best effect from target product. For manufacturers who wish to develop product based on the gut environment study, we are providing the research platform specialized for the study in the gut environment to understand how manufacturers' products affect the gut environment and what gut environmental factor is the key for the health effect. A research platform uniquely includes the originally developed sampling kit, which enables people to collect the stored feces, the biological sample for the gas study, in room temperature. This largely helps people for sampling because people do not have to put their own poop into their fridge, which is the current standard of the sampling method. And our analysis pipelines have been prepared for the different experimental phase to allow people to come into the field of gas study more easily. And we are currently developing the direct to customer evaluation service, which supports public consumers to find their best product based on their gut environment as well. The product studied with our research platform will be advertised and recommended to the user if the gut environment is suitable for receiving the effect. We have started working with many famous food and supplement manufacturers in Japan, but now we are working with wider fields, such as pharmaceutical and insurance fields, by providing our gut study data in applicable form to their business. Our team has the strongest research for studying the gut environment in Japan. Most of the board members have a position in Japanese university and publishing several articles in the top science journal like the Nature and Cell. If you're interested to study the gut environment to improve the product or to improve the people's health and wellness, we have a synergy. Please give us a message. Looking forward to hear from you and collaborate with you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Yoshi Naganuma from Accor. Accor is providing a smart office platform, which is based on work style OS to be flexible work. It enables new way of working experience with AI IoT technology. Accor is actually the best smart office provider in Japan. 
We have more than 5,000 clients, especially top-tier building developers like Mitsubishi, Mitsui, and Tokyo, as well as top-tier enterprise companies like IBM, MEFG, and Toyota. As you know, workspace experiences have been changing in the office because of COVID-19. For example, entrance, private desks, as well as meeting rooms, and even working from home. Our solution is to change office buildings and enterprise companies into hybrid workspace model. The OS covers from center offices to shared office, hotels, co-working spaces, and home by recognizing the check-in data of workers and it recommends the best spot for your work in terms of productivity. This is an interface of WorkStyle OS. We, you can easily check in, in any spot shared with your team. Your team members are displayed on the same dashboard on the OS for each spot category. It visualizes who works where, seat status, and evaluates productivity in response to workspaces. Employees are less likely to feel separated by location. We can provide three user benefits if you are an enterprise worker. First, you can choose wherever you want to work. Second, you can get your best place to work flexibly. Third, you can save the money for managing workspaces when it comes to facility management. As you see on the right side, the OS can store the check-in data of workers by using mobile QR code and biometrics, as well as the evaluation data and environmental data of each spot by using sensors. And then WorkStyle OS can run for itself for from three types of data, which is extracted, automation, facilitation, and recommendation for workers. This is the overview of our market. There are already some players, but WorkStyle OS is so unique that the notion of smart office can be extended to outside of your office. Working spaces, shared office, hotel, cafe, any secure spot, and even your home. And we focus on work workspace experiences, which is so different from other players. You can choose wherever you want to check in with deeply connected with the current secure enterprise infrastructure. The smart office market is so huge and rapid growing through 10 years, thanks to AI IoT technology and driving it more because of COVID especially. We'd happy if we could have further discussion as following. First, space owners to deliver the flexible work and to enhance the value of your properties. Second, investment partners for Series B round. Thank you. Hello, I'm Honoka Kiso, CEO of Trajan Biopharma. Today, I would like to introduce our game-changing antibody drug for tooth regeneration. Our company was established last May with funding from Kyoto University Innovation Capital. Dr. Takahashi, Dr. Takatani, and myself are co-founders of the company. We are currently a team of eight professionals. I am also a working dentist for 15 years. Sometimes I treat young patients who lack few teeth. Such condition is called congenital or partial tooth loss. Incidence rates of congenital and partial tooth loss are 0.1% and about 10%. The third condition acquired is a tooth loss due to decay or periodontal disease. Many elderly people are suffering from this condition. Current treatment options for such patients are dentures or getting dental implants. However, with Trojan Biopharma's innovation, we would like to provide a game-changing treatment for tooth regeneration. By using disease model animals and information on cutting-edge molecular biology, we discovered the antibodies against the key protein to treat these diseases. With our innovation breakthrough, we would like to realize a tooth regeneration drug for about 300 million people with tooth defects across the world. Our aim is to inject one-shot antibody to treat these patients for tooth regeneration based on their gene status. We are now at preclinical stage for drug development. As you can see, 
We have three different pipelines to treat congenital, partial, and acquired tooth defects. The target of number one and number two is same, and if antibody for number one pipeline will be successful, it would be technically more feasible and quick to adapt to treat patients in number two pipeline. Market size for number three pipeline is apparently big. However, we are starting from number one pipeline because of high unmet needs and to get successful proof of concept with gene status as biomarker. Currently, we are performing further research analysis to treat third dentition with number three pipeline. Dentures, dental implant, and tissue engineering tooth regeneration are our competitors at the moment, but these have some problems such as cost and safety. Our technology provides the only solution to regenerate teeth with pharmaceuticals. This is the L&D timeline of our drug. We are planning to start phase 1 clinical trial in 2023 and aim to launch the drug in Japan by 2030 as a treatment for congenital tooth loss. We believe that we can give a game-changing treatment in dental area and our innovation has remarkable global marketability health, and social impact. Thank you for your attention. I look forward to your feedback. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Satoshi Nagata from Sagri. Let me introduce our company's product and technology for you today. Uh, first, let me introduce our founder's story. Uh, this story began in Africa. Our founder, Shunsuke Tsuboi, visited Rwanda for scientific education programs for children there. At the time, he realized that children had a dream, but dreams could not be achieved due to the poor farming situation. Why this happens? There are three reasons. One, less access of technology. Second, too much manual farming. Third, less data. So, our founder decided to launch our company, Sagli, for solving agriculture problems in the world. Based on this experience, we found it. Our company, in a world, can do smart farming by big data and ground data analysis. Sagri means satellite AI grid. We can contribute smart farming, then suggest the best fertilizer amount, tracking the record. As a result, imagine countries people can do farming without any knowledge and experience. Uh, this is our business model. Our clients are government, corporations, and farmers. We can solve each pain point from agriculture. For the government, we can create the United Database for Smart Farming Policy and let the government collect the more effective data from farmers. For corporates, uh, we can deliver a dataset and method for credit creation. Moreover, we can create a real-time monitoring system for corporates to track the farmland. It means uh, they can procure vegetables effectively and also we can commit the food traceability. Uh, for farmers, we can suggest the best fertilizer amount tracking the uh, activity input out by. So farmers can reduce cost and increase the productivity and yield. Uh, we can contribute each stakeholder's pain. So everybody is willing to pay us uh, based on subscription or revenue share model. Uh, this model is created, uh, created by our team. Our team combined by space, agriculture, global business specialists. Myself is handling overseas business from India. Our uh, the cooperation of academic and real business, we have created our uh, core technology, AI Polygon. This polygon automatically creates a boundary between farmland and farmland, and we can load information by customized basis. By doing so, we can easily create the database for every stakeholder in agriculture. If farmers use our service, it's obvious that they can improve the yield and productivity. This is the result of works in Rajasthan area in India. This photo shows how it works. Please take a look at the right side of the photo. Uh, this weight well grows compared with the left one that is not using our method. By combining ground data and satellite data, we can create the best fertilizer amount of farmland. This is all from my side, and we'd like to expand our service in India. So we are looking for a proof of concept clients in India. When you are interested in us, please let me know. 
Lastly, let me explain our previous project in Japan and India. This proves that we can contribute the pain. Uh, firstly, we have created the abundant farm and monitoring system for local governments in Japan. This monitoring system enables government staff to monitor the farmland without visiting. That's why central and local governments are fond of using our services. In addition, this is our other Indian project. This enables aggregators to collect data easily uh, with satellite data and grounded combination. Uh, this is all from our side. Well, thank you for listening. See you soon. We help manufacturing company to cut product development time by our automation system. Let me bring you to time travel to see the manufacturing progress. Back to 1980, best link in Japan Corolla was produced taking three years development. In 2005, for the first time in the world, Nissan achieved to produce a new car taking less than one year development. This short term development was enabled by the emergence of a new method, computer aided engineering so-called CAE, to conduct computer simulation instead of physical experiment. This was a huge advance for manufacturing. However, do you know over 7 million proofs was recorded in 2018? Recently, makers have increased the common parts to cut manufacturing cost, so one percent effect causes big recalls today. Japanese automobile companies realized how important to make the balance of this trade-off and came to us for the solution. Alternate clients are achieving the both product safety and speed development by using our software. On average, they accomplish to cut 80% of the most time-consuming preparation process for simulation. They believed in our abundant experience in CAE. Our CEO Nishura founded Integral Technology to advance CAE together with our customers. Their pain point in CAE is the time-consuming modeling process, especially those output instability, manual modification, and expert shortage. Let me explain how we solve them. Output instability occurs because various operators involved in modeling. If there is any underqualified model, they cannot move to the next simulation process. But with our automatic system, they can always get the stable output and smoothly move to the next process. Manual modification is a tedious and hard work for operators. As a simple example, there are five holes on one plate. Operators must check if each hole has 10 divisions correctly. If not, they have to manually modify one by one. You cannot imagine how many plates there are in a car. They spend a long time on this very detailed quality check. But with our accurate and high quality output, they can cut this process and drastically reduce the total modeling time. Our shape recognition technology is the key for this result. We have 11 patents today and more on the list. Expert shortage is another issue and our CEO also struggled with educating operators. We solve this problem by our simple operation. It doesn't have to be expert but anyone can use our software. Now, you may hesitate to use new software by replacing your current one, but don't worry. Our software works with yours by making our special technology integrate with them, just as our name, Integral Technology. Now, with this unique automatic system, we are reaching out to global automobile market, which scale is $900 million. Also, this year we are developing AI shape recognition system, which can be a breakthrough in manufacturing. There are many companies ready for the next innovation with us. If you are one of them, catch me later. Finally, if you know someone working for CAE, please kindly contact us. We can make a better and a safer future together. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Kenji and I'm the CSO for Atomus. Today, really excited to tell you about Cubitan, our new gas cylinder for gas storage and industry. So even though it's 2021, we still use a really antique 
technology to store gases. I think we've all seen these uh, gas delivery trucks driving around, hauling around these really large and uh, heavy tanks. As a practical issue, there um, are constraints on the people and, and trucks available to, to uh, distribute these cylinders. We need better ways of distributing and, and storing these gases. We need a new approach. And uh, at Atomus, we are uh, experts in a new type of adsorbent material called uh, metal organic frameworks or MOPs. What these materials are is that they consist of metals uh, and organic molecules. And when we combine these two components together, what we actually end up with is a crystalline lattice, uh, like the one shown here. And they have a large density of small pores that gases can, can go inside. And so they're actually the highest surface area materials that are currently known. And the other cool thing about these materials is that we can actually tune um, the metal and the organic molecule that we use to form the material um, so that the material becomes optimized for the specific type of gas that we're trying to store. So these MOFs gave us the idea for Cubitan, which as the name suggests is a cubic uh, type of tank. Cubes are nice because you can actually stack them on top of each other. You can form you know, neat arrays uh, where you're, when you're storing the units. Um, and but just by virtue of having these MOFs uh, as pellets inside the unit, uh, we can actually compress gas into a much smaller space than uh, in a conventional cylinder. And so if we um, take a, a gas cylinder, which is, uh, uh, has the dimensions that we've shown here, we can actually compress the gas, uh, the same amount of gas, into uh, less than a quarter of the volume just by having uh, the MOF inside uh, the unit. With Cubitan, we're also including an IoT module, so you'll be able to tell exactly where each of these units are, as well as how much gas is remaining inside uh, the unit. And what this allows you to get to is a subscription type of model. Um, and so we'll be pulling information periodically off each of the units that are at our end users. Um, we can provide services like automated ordering and also dispatching through our distributors. Gas producers will be able to tell how much uh, gas will be uh, required at the distributors. Uh, so better demand forecasts. And ultimately, it's going to enable um, inventory management at each of uh, these stages in the value chain uh, to be performed much more efficiently. So, um, so that's uh, Cubitan, um, and uh, you know, currently we're coming up to our Series B uh, funding round. So it'd be great to, if you're an investor um, that might be interested in, in learning more about uh, our journey or even joining us on our journey, um, I'd love to hear from you. And I've noted my email address here. Uh, you can also reach me through our website, and there's a contact form, and there's also more information about our various business lines as well. So look forward to hearing from you and thanks very much. Hello everyone. My name is Kazuo Kiyamura, co-founder and CEO at Mui Lab. Mui means natural state of mind. We offer Mui calm design and technology. So this is a team of Mui Lab from Kyoto, Japan. We are assembly of technologists, designers, and business people. We are targeting growing smart home market. Size-wise, will be $400 billion in 2025. However, today's technology is obtrusive and flashy, focusing on taking your marketing moment. We offer calm moment rather than micro moment. We are focusing on time well spent in our ordinary life with technology. How it works? This is Mui. Mui's connected device and cloud-based services enable connecting families at home with calm moment. Mui is working as smart home hub as well. So you can touch to activate, send in notification to the family, and you can interact with voice and their calm messages. We design Mui with natural material wood, as same material used for home decor. Beyond interior design, Mui works as smart home hub for control things and communications. We are awarded best of CES, also selected as five biggest trends from 4,000 plus companies. 
As a result of that, our traction has been global. We have been working with global leading companies. We offer two different products. One is Calm Design Device, which offers customer engagement for housing companies for their lifetime value with consumers. From bedroom to living room or both, you can install MUI at home. Beyond smart home, it's been used in third places, cloud coffee shops, bookstores, and fashion retails. Our other product line is platform for MUI experience. We offer MUI, CAM design, and technology for different form factors, from furniture to smart devices. From armrest of couch to smart light switches, in Japan, we will be everywhere. This is a very unique project with Wacom. We is installed in the wooden pillar at home to interact with Wacom Pen for digital archiving family memories, especially height marking. We offer different materials such as fabric, this canvas is also a smart home hub for messages. Handwritten messages from past to the future with same stroke and timing. We believe digital technology could focus on emotional moment as well. MuiLab is growing with smart home market. We are targeting our business for scale and exit in 2024-2025. Business model is SaaS plus a box for home market. We offer licensing model for platform businesses. We are offering our services, especially in Japan, and the next focus is in Europe and US for scale. Our competitors are not competitors, they are our collaborators. Our unique proposition allows integrate several different services. We are collaborating with Alexa for calm and natural interaction. You can imagine you'll be in front of fireplace with calm Alexa. How we human focus on our everyday life is what tech should focus in smart home market, not tech first. With kids and family, it's been crystal clear to us. That's why we created Mui. Smart home is the future of our homes. Let's make better run for our well-being, not disrupt. For achieving our vision and goals, we are always looking for partners globally. Appreciate your kindly introduction. This is Mui, Calm Design and Technology from Kyoto. Thank you so much. I'm Toshiaki Akita, founder and CEO of Iconet Laboratory. We are transforming heart failure treatment by patient specific cardiac support net. Heart failure pandemic will be one of the biggest medical issues in 10 years. 6.5 people are suffering from heart failure in US, and this number will jump up 8 million by 2030. Medical costs will double up to $70 billion. Moreover, Heart failure is progress when lag long disorder with exercise intolerance, which eventually result in job loss. It's a huge economic loss and social issue. Heart failure deteriorates with concomitant cardiac dilation. This process is called as cardiac remodeling. At end stage, heart size becomes three times bigger than normal, and its function drops less than one third. Drug therapy is not effective to stop cardiac remodeling. At end stage, heart transplantation is the only effective treatment, but extreme donor shortage is a problem. Left ventricular assist device is expensive and complication rate is high. Therefore, new treatment at reasonable cost is urgently needed. We propose a cardiac support net will be the solution. What is cardiac support net? It is an implantable device to stop cardiac remodeling by external constraint with net. Our patient's specific cardiac support net is innovative, 
to solve the issues of previous one, a concoa cap. It is a personalized design from patient card images and manufactured by computer-aided 3D knitting machine. So no need for adjustment during implantation. Short operation time will be achieved with minimally invasive surgery. This slide shows the effectiveness of a product. Peak oxygen consumption is increased 0.84 in cardiac contractive modulation therapy, which is recently approved as heart failure treatment device in US. In our human study, our device increased 2.15 more than double implement than CCM. Peak oxygen consumption is an objective marker for exercise tolerance and surrogate marker of survival. So not only improvement of physical activity, but also longer survival will be expected. This shows the roadmap. We have successfully completed first in human study in March this year. We raised $2 million in Series B. We were planning to start clinical trials this year, hoping to get PMDA approval by 2024. We plan Series C, $5 million for PMDA approval and overseas clinical trial. This slide shows sales estimation. Domestic sales will be $20 million by 2032. Overseas sales will be exceeded domestic sales in 2030. Our gross sales amount will be about 200 to 400 million dollars in worldwide. This is a summary. Our most important message to you is number four. We are seeking business partner to get approval and to cover distribution channel in US and EU. Thank you for your attention. Please contact me if you have an interest or a question. Hi, I'm Hiroshi Shimamura, the CEO of Magic Sales Incorporated. In order to prevent fractures caused by falls in the elderly, we've developed a special floor called Yawa. It stays hard when walking it, but it's soft when you fall on it. Let me first introduce myself. I was at Yamaha Motor until last year and designed the motorcycles like this. With this motorcycle's collision technology, I will innovate the floor. Fractures caused by falls in the elderly are often fatal. In fact, my grandmother was bedridden because of fractures. In her later years, she died, saying, I want to die early. The number of accidents is increasing rapidly today. It has doubled since 2000 and the number is 1 million people every year in Japan and 20 million people in the world. It is one of the major causes of long-term care. It costs 18 billion dollars a year only for human fractures in Japan. It is one of the world's serious problems that must be solved right now. Target priorities like this, especially in the rehabilitation world, one in six people has fallen. In places like this, of course, there have been countermeasures. However, the effect is insufficient. And tatami mats and carpet can't prevent fractures. So, we have developed a special floor called Yawa. It stays hard when walking on it, but it's soft when you fall on it. This principle uses the concept of mechanical metamaterials. As you can see, when a large force is applied, the internal structure changes significantly. Its hardness changes greatly. We have applied for four patents. Korea reduces the impact by about half compared to flooring. In addition, we keep the load below the standard for osteoplastic female fractures. You can see how it is absorbed. When you drop a flat pot on regular floor, it breaks like this. But when you drop the flower pot on Koreawa, it bounces like a deflated ball and will not break. Koreawa has the same working stability as a regular floor. Currently, we are in joint research with the Fujita Medical University. 
working with a cane or using a wheelchair, but Korewa doesn't get dented. In short, Korewa is the world's first floor to combine sufficient shock absorption and sufficient stability in walking. These are the examples of actual use. They can be used just by placing it. Just in over 70 cases, there are more than 40 volts, there are no bruises or broken bones. The head nurse and the patient said, Koreawa is great! These are the market size. The global market is 48 billion US dollars. As a next step, we'd like to develop the monitoring service with Koreawa. We'll also develop new materials that reduce sound and vibration. This is the founding team. We are a team of XMR engineers and physical therapists who are Globis MBA graduates. Finally, one in three elderly people has fallen. In other words, if you increase your family members, all of you are affected. But don't worry, we are here to protect you. Thank you very much for your time. Hi, my name is Kenji Nishitani. I'm CEO of UMAP. And my name is Ayano Kita. I'm an international strategy manager of UMAP. Most of the electronic devices around us are not performing at their full potential. A factor that inhibits the best performance is heat. For example, have you ever felt your computer heat up and lose its charge quickly? Heat issues cause slower processor speed, shorter lifetime, and energy loss. Our material can display twice the heat, which leads a 10% reduction of energy loss in electronic vehicles. We are a university originated materials science startup, and we deliver the best summer materials of electronic devices. We have two unfair advantages. First, we have the technology and recipes to produce the world's best summer material. Second, we are a group of cutting-edge researchers in material science, and we continuously create IPs and proof of concept. This is our product. Aluminum nitrile substrate with thermalite. We invented heat efficient material called thermalite and we added it to ceramic substrate. Our substrate has twice the heat dissipation and toughness of conventional materials. In our business model, we provide our technology and recipes to manufacturers and get royalty from them. Our material will be installed into a wide range of products such as electric vehicles and laptops. Last year, we raised $3 million to build a pilot line for research and development, and we received national grant $2 million. Using this money, we have created a number of patents and proof of concept. We started to sell our samples three years ago, and our sample sales reached $500,000. The year map mainly consists of professional material science researchers with years of experience in crystal growth, including Professor Ujihara and Nago University. And we are officially supported by Nago University. And we can utilize development infrastructures such as research equipment and researchers' network. And finally, in three years, we aspire to deliver our product to users. To achieve this goal, we need two things. First, we need to raise public awareness to expand our network globally. Second, we need strategic partners to improve our products and meet the needs. Now, we are looking for potential partners in the ceramic substrate industry and module industry. In one year, we'd like to start research and development and in three years, we aim to move to mass production eventually. Thermal control will be an indispensable technology for the next generation industries. Please contact me if you are interested or can help us. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Masaki Niwa, CEO of Grand Green. We create new crops and vegetables using our proprietary technologies. One of our technology focus is gene editing. 
Gene editing is a potent tool for the direct, fast, and pre precise improvement of crops. We consider it one of the solutions for rapid breeding for the rapidly changing world, since we make new cultivars much faster than conventional breeding as quickly as one to three years. The technology can create crop traits beneficial to the world. And it is good timing to utilize the technology for actual crops because the governments such as the US, Japan, etc., have decided not to regulate gene edited crops since the technology is equivalent to conventional breeding. Up to now, more than 15 companies have notified over 30 gene edited crops to governments. But there is still a technical limitation. The limitation is that there was no universal delivery system for gene editing in plants. Even if you can gene edit a certain kind of tomato, here cultivar A, you cannot gene edit other cultivars like cultivar B here. The technology is highly genotype dependent. You can apply the technology to only a tiny limited fraction of the wide variety of crops and vegetables. And in most cases, commercial cultivars are difficult to edit. Our research and development started from this point and have now overcome it. We, Grand Green, has developed an original delivery system for gene editing in plants. Our system includes a highly efficient vector for gene editing tools and a versatile introduction method for a wide variety of crops. The data shows our vector has twice higher efficiency than a conventional one, and we have POC in a commercial tomato and other crops. In tomato, we couldn't obtain gene edited plants using a conventional method, but G&G system has created many gene edited plants with as high efficiency as 11%. So why were we able to establish the technology? I am a former scientist at Kyoto University and invented the, the original technology and founded Grand Green. And our managing team includes associate professor, Dr. Notaguchi at Nagoya University. Our CEO, CTO, Takehito, is a former breeder at an international seed company and a gene editing specialist. We also have strengths in intellectual properties because two of the board members are patent attorneys. And our COO, Keita, is well experienced in business development. We are doing two business models. First is technology provision service in which we provide our technologies to seed companies, food companies, etc., and earning R&D and license fees. The second is original crop development. For example, we are creating lettuce for Indo farming, shatter resistant high yield perilla, and soybeans having improved flavor. Our attraction records are over $7 million funding, including grants and investment, three paid R&D programs, and seven patent groups. Last year, we had got funding, and by using it, we achieved POC in commercial crops. This year, we are prospecting to expand our paid R&D programs. In 2022, we will announce our original gene edited crops and start the second part of our business by selling our original cultivars. Lastly, we are seeking R&D and business partners in gene editing and funding at the end of this year. If you are interested, feel free to contact us through our website or email me. Thank you for your listening. Hello, everyone. I'm Martin from Lozi. We are a startup in the truck and trees category. Lozi was awarded the top prize in the Plug and Play Expo and the accelerator program of Sagawa Express, which is a major logistics company in Japan. Today, I would like to talk about our unique tracing to smart barcode and our global strategy too. In many cases, supply chain traceability is fragmented by the intervention of various players. Integrating all the system of the players would require a large amount of cost, and it's not easy to achieve. Smart Barcode has focused on the relationship between QR codes and smartphones to solve this problem in a simple and flexible way. Let's imagine this. 
What if a single QR code could be used to access uh, different data sets depending by the person, location, and time? Smart barcode requires only a single QR code and a smartphone to enter the necessary data at each tracking point from the entrance to the exit of the supply chain. Tracing data is displayed and shared on the smartphone of all players, shippers, logistic companies, consignees, and the consumers can check the data. 当社では、トヨスからニューヨークの高級レストランに鮮魚を運ぶプロジェクトでスマートバーコードを利用しました。複数の事業者が介在する国際物流では、物の動きをリアルタイムで把握することが難しく、路地のスマートバーコードでこの問題を解決できました。We are in the process of building a SaaS based open platform that allows users to make their own tracing plans and issue dedicated mobile apps and barcodes. This platform can be used by standalone businesses as well as by logistic companies to use smart barcode for the purpose of joint delivery. Tracing is not the only advantage of smart barcode. The pairing function, which scans a series of barcodes in a parent child relationship, enables palletizing and linking cargo and vehicles. Warehouse operation and last mile delivery are streamlined, and pairing can also be applied to manufacturing management. Our vision is to lead logistics in the age of the physical internet through joint delivery between different businesses. We would like to expand our business not only domestically but also globally. We are working on cross border traceability with our strong partners. We are expanding our business to include fresh food exports to the US, cross border e commerce to Africa, and trade between Japan and China. With the signing of RCEP last year, Free trade among Asian countries will accelerate in the future. And with the spread of EC, there is an urgent need for developing countries to improve their logistics infrastructure. Through new partnerships with logistic companies, trading companies, and e commerce platforms, mainly in Asia, we will work together to build a borderless next generation trading platform. Please feel free to contact me anytime. Thank you for listening. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed these presentations and saw amazing companies that the founders are building. If you're interested in connecting with these companies, we have many options for you linked below. Thank you for joining us today and have a pleasant day. Bye bye.